What if I told you that in the near future, you're gonna get access to your own personal financial analyst to help you plan your finances so that you never have to worry about money again? Well, that future may not be that far away. On the 30th of November, a new chat-based artificial intelligence was released to the public. And within a few weeks, it had amassed millions of users who are now claiming that this technology is going to change every corner of our lives. And I think it will too. Let me show you why. Let's say you just come home late from work and you can't be bothered to go to the shops. Give me five recipes that I can cook based on what's left in the fridge. And there we have it, a Spanish omelet, fried rice, risotto, five interesting recipes along with the cooking instructions. See you later, Jamie Oliver. Or let's say you're a student that needs to write an essay on the book, The Old Man and the Sea and the Struggles of Man and Nature. And boom, there it is, an essay that's good enough for any GCSE exam. In fact, that's too easy. Rewrite this essay as if Jeremy Clarkson had written it. And this is just insane. So I've asked my mate Fred, who thinks he does a good Clarkson impression, to read out the first paragraph. The old Man in the Sea is a banger of a book by the one and only Ernest Hemingway. It's a short little romp about an old Cuban fisherman, Santiago, who's having a bit of a dry spell. But he's not one to give up easily. Oh no. So he sets out to sea in his tiny little skiff, determined to catch a big fish, and make his fortunes. How creepy is that? But it doesn't stop there. It even planned my honeymoon. I asked it to give me a two week itinerary based on the things that we like to do and a budget. And it's given me a step-by-step -step itinerary for each day with the attractions that we should see, where we should stay and how we should travel between each destination. It will even write code for you. Last week, I was trying to animate some of the buttons on my website. So I asked it, what's the code I need? And there it is. The potential applications for this tool are just insane. And today I'm gonna to take you with me as I challenge this tool to see how it can help us manage our finances and discuss what this means for the future of investing. Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is James, I am a financial planner and I'm about to be replaced by AI. Well, maybe not quite yet but I have been absolutely blown away by what this tool can do. And it was opened my eyes to how technology like this is going to revolutionize the way that we manage our finances. ChatGPT is a natural language model that has been given access to large text-based data sets and parts of the internet to learn how to speak like a human. In November, the third version of this model was released to the public. And since then, it has captured the imaginations of millions of people as to what this technology will be able to do in the future. What's open to the public is a very early version of this model, which has been optimized for text-based conversations. It's by no means designed for managing finances, but what it can do even at this early stage is astonishing. And it sets the scene for what these models will be able to do in the future. So let me show you some examples of what you can do with this thing right now. Let's say that you are new to investing. So you ask it for some book recommendations and there we have it. Rich Dad, Poor Dad, The Intelligent Investor and some of the other best-selling books of all time. But let's take this one step further and ask it to summarize their key points. And there we have it, a succinct summary of each of these Books. And if you have a specific book in mind, like for example, A Random Walk Down Wall Street, you can ask it to summarize all of the main points so you don't have to read it. To put this into perspective, there is a billion dollar company called Blinkist that its entire business model is based on summarizing books so you don't have to read them. Well, it might not have a business for that much longer. I've also been using this tool to help me do research for my videos, like asking it to provide me with a list of research papers that investigate the effects of inflation on economic growth. And as a cherry on top, summarize their findings for me. Here the tool is synthesizing responses from other text-based data. This is what it's optimized for and what it's really good at. But what if I start asking it some more meaty questions like, what are the best funds I can invest in? Well, here it's given us five different funds with a brief description of each. We have the Vanguard Life Strategy 100 Fund, a Jupiter UK Growth Fund, and then three income funds, one from Invesco, Artemis, and 
BlackRock. I was very surprised that it actually named specific funds because what's best for one person might not be best for somebody else. There is no one size fits all. But then it does end with this little caveat that these are just examples. You should do your own research and consult a financial advisor before making any investment decisions. So it's veering away from giving actual advice, which is a good thing because it doesn't know anywhere near enough about us to make a personal recommendation. But I am interested in why it actually chose these specific funds. And this is what it said. They have a good track record of performance. They also provide a diverse range of investments with a mix of UK and global equities, bonds and cash. Additionally, they are managed by reputable asset management firms with a long history of investing in the UK market. It then provides use cases for each of these funds before ending up with another caveat that performance does not guarantee future returns. And again, you should consult a financial advisor before making investment decisions. Now, to the untrained eye, this may all sound good and well. It has given us a diverse range of funds to choose from. They are run by reputable companies that do have a long track record. But I'm starting to see some glitches in the matrix. Firstly, it says that the Vanguard Life Strategy Fund offers a portfolio of UK and global equities, bonds and cash. But LS100 is a 100% equity fund. There's no bonds in it. And then I asked, what does it actually mean by a good performance track record? To which it replied, historical performance of these funds compared to their benchmark index or peer group. So let's do a spot check and see whether these funds actually have beaten these benchmarks. Now, it may surprise you to learn that ChatGPT is not actually connected to the internet, which is pretty amazing. Instead, it's working off a data dump that goes up to mid 2021. So if we check the data up until that point, we can see that Artemis income is roughly in line with its benchmark and peer group, but Jupiter UK growth is a long way behind. So clearly when we dig deeper, it seems like this model is not 100% accurate and at times is providing incorrect information. It actually does give us a warning about this on the front page. So no, in its current state, this tool is not going to be able to give us personal recommendations or to be able to pick the best performing stocks of the future. But it can be incredibly useful for doing initial research. As an example, we could ask it to give us a list of the cheapest global index funds. And there you go. Or perhaps you want to learn more about the different types of personal insurance you can get in the UK, how it works and when you might need it. It's great for getting to grips with a new subject and summarizing high level information, but always remember that it is not 100% correct. And to the untrained eye, this can be hard to see because it gives answers with such confidence. But what's quite interesting is that you can actually tell it when you think it's wrong. And if it agrees with you, it will then apologize and correct itself. Again, I've put a link to this tool down in the description. So I know you're probably dying to give this a go. So get stuck in and perhaps first interrogate it on a subject that you know a lot about so that you can get a feel for its limitations and how accurate it is. You'll also notice that the more specific you can be with the questions that you're asking and the better follow-up questions that you can ask, the better responses that you will get. When it comes to making key decisions about our finances, we really need to have near 100% accuracy before it can be relied upon entirely. But there are many applications where 100% accuracy is not required, like rewriting the copy of your website, writing a thank you letter, or coming up with holiday ideas. Ultimately, this model is still in its infancy, and over the coming months, I expect it to evolve rapidly to become much more accurate and to be able to process real-time data faster than any human. So what does this mean for the future of investing? Will AI like this be able to help us pick stocks so that we can beat the market? I think yes and no. Yes, AI like this is going to be able to help identify missed price stocks faster than any human. And I think there will be an endless battle between high frequency trading firms to build a slightly faster or slightly more accurate model. But for everybody else that isn't trading by the nanosecond, it will only mean that stock markets become even more accurate as these models help us to price in new information, which should ultimately mean that index funds become even harder to beat. And what about me? 
Is AI likely to replace financial advisors? Well, some areas of financial advice are formulaic and there are already robo-advisors out there advising on simple cases like this. But it may take some time before there is a model that is complex enough to handle the emotions of a panicked client during a stock market crash or the nuances of grandparents that want to pass their assets onto their adult children, but they're concerned that their children might get divorced. And even if AI could do all of these things, many people would still feel more comfortable having it delivered through a human. So instead of replacing financial advisors, doctors, and software developers, I think AI is going to turn them into superhumans by doing all of the heavy lifting and freeing up their time to focus on the most sensitive things. This is, of course, just my opinion, and I would love to hear what you think. How do you think technology like this is going to change your industry? And what use cases can you think of? Please do let me know down in the comments. The only thing that I know for certain is that over the coming years, our lives are going to change in ways we cannot imagine. And if that is the case, there is one thing that you need to be investing in right now. And if you want to know what that is, watch this video right here.